Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dr. Brady Weirich and this is the Biohacking Wellness Podcast, or in this case, video. So if you're listening to this on audio, there is a coinciding video that's going along with YouTube. Um, however, I'm not going to pay to put a bunch of fancy graphics and stuff into the video. So it's just me talking. But what I'm doing is I'm going to reference uh, several of the blog posts over the last couple of weeks. We haven't really talked about them in detail. So everything that I'm talking about, with the exception of the Super Bowl commercials, because I want to start with that, but um, everything we're going to talk about is in a blog on our website, intermountaincenterforwellbeing.com backslash blog. So you can check it out there. I'll make sure I link to that in the notes. So it's just me today. Uh, like I said, there's several topics that I want to go into. Um, and the first one being, being the Super Bowl. And I do have to admit, going into the Super Bowl weekend, I was fully planning on boycotting it being done with the NFL, uh, which is sad for me to say because here I am at 45 years old and I've got a lot of great memories of watching football with my dad, uh, watching football by myself, just as a kid, just loving, loving to watch football. I still do enjoy it. Um, however, the, how do you put this? The circus has gotten to be a little much for me. So I don't know how involved I'm going to be next year. However, this year what I did is I actually came into it to watch it with a purpose, and that purpose was to actually pay attention to the videos. And I actually took no, excuse me, pay attention to the commercials. I actually took notes on the commercials. Um, I can't. I had a series of categories that I was expecting to see commercials on. I'd put hash marks by those topics just to see how often during the Super Bowl that they put junk food in our faces, they put um, pharmaceutical medications in our faces, um, there was a couple others, but I was actually really surprised with what I found out and what I saw. So, and I have some theories, so stick with me for a little bit through this. Uh, so here, here's the numbers. So between the opening kickoff and the clock ending in overtime, okay? So between those two times, we saw none le <laughs> no less than 64 30-minute to, I think some of those were even two-minute commercials uh, during that time frame. So 64 mess sponsored messages from different sources, okay? So 30, here's what was surprising to me. 38 of those messages were one and done. Well, a lot of them were one and done, two and done. Uh, commercials that I wasn't expecting. Okay? The housing market, um, the apartment, looking for an apartment. Those ones were actually on there quite a bit. Uh, we saw a couple of religious commercials, uh, commercials that were pro-Christianity. Didn't have any problem with those. Uh, they tried to sell on ETV. Timu was on there quite a bit. We saw one for lotion. Uh, quite a few uh, Bass Pro Shops, they were on the Super Bowl. I'd never seen that before. But there were 38 of those particular commercials, um, which fine, whatever. Those people need to advertise, right? I advertise. It's part of the way business goes around. Speaking of me advertising, there were commercials for six, there were six local commercials for our area here in Idaho Falls and Southeast Idaho for things like cars and uh, banks, etc. So I just put those local ones under local. They didn't count towards car commercials. I, I expected to see like Chevy Ford. Um, there was only four of them. One of them BMW, one with Volkswagen. Don't remember the other two. Of course, oh, uh, Hyundai. They were pushing electric vehicles, of course. Uh, movies and TV. Uh, didn't expect this many, but there was 38. Uh, so 38 commercials for different TV shows, different movies, which... There's a way there to, you go watch those, you're going to see big pharma stuff, right? I mean, that's that's kind of how this works. Processed food, so junk food. There wasn't that many there. Um, soda, junk food, etc. There was only nine commercials for that. Phones, like T-Mobile, Verizon, uh, there was only four. Insurance, there was only four. In my opinion, insurance wins. State Farm won it. The whole Arnold Schwarzenegger thing cracked me up. I thought that was hilarious. Um, alcohol, there was only four beer commercials. Uh, so that was a big surprise. But, um, and then four car commercials. One political commercial. This is the only political statement I'm going to say. 
I'm a fan of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I think he's got some great ideas as far as how to stick it to pharmaceutical companies, how to start fixing our own uh, medical system. So I was happy to see his commercial on there. There was only three fast food commercials. That was a huge surprise. So Taco Bell, McDonald's, KFC, didn't see them. Uh, there was only three. I don't really, I remember the one uh, that was for, a, I think it was Carl's Jr. that involved airplanes. So of course that one caught my attention because I'm an aviation geek. Uh, but there was only three, which is really a big surprise because most of the time, what you see when you watch these games, it's drugs, insurance, fast food, and more drugs. So to only see three fast food commercials, I was shocked. But the biggest shock of all for me, for this whole time, out of all of these 64 commercials that I saw, there was only one for a pharmaceutical company. It wasn't a drug. It wasn't for a specific condition. It was literally from Pfizer patting themselves on the back. One commercial. Don't know how long it was. Don't care to go back and waste my time to figure out how long it was. But it was big. It was Pfizer saying, "Hey, look how long we've been around. Look what a great company we are. Here we are. So, here we go. Do a little search on Pfizer. Google how many times they've been fined. Google how much they've been fined, and you will find out that since 2000, since the year 2000, so 24 years now, Pfizer has been fined almost 11 billion with a B billion dollars." 11 billion, they've been fined. Hey, that's almost as much as a new aircraft carrier, just saying. Uh, 11 billion in fines. So Pfizer's literally, they're not gonna tell you that, of course. They want you to think that they're the, the good company. Well, are they? Because they've been fined for fraud. They've been fined for lying to us. They've been fined for falsifying um, research about drugs. They've been fined for kickbacks, giving doctors money back for selling their drugs. So it makes me wonder, why was Pfizer the only one? Is it related to Pfizer sponsoring the big football stud, Travis Kelsey? Because he did a bunch of commercials for them for their vaccines. Is that related? Did they pay extra for that commercial to keep out all the other pharmaceutical companies? Was that, was that commercial placed at that specific time to try to drive our emotions into thinking that this company has our best health in mind? I don't know. Purely speculation on my point, on my part. I totally get that. But I just thought it was interesting that they were the only one and the timing of it, plus everything else with you know Travis Kelsey and that superstar that he's dating. Hey, that, and really those to that relationship is what turned me off for football, by the way. Um, it's more of a show than it is about football. So anyway, those are my thoughts on that. Those are the commercials. Really surprised to only see one drug company commercial which if you follow if you watch the other commercials for the the 38 tv shows and movies i'm guaranteed you're going to see some commercials for other drugs so just thought that was interesting now let's shift gears um, i want to go to the blog there have been a few topics in the blog that you need to go check out you need to look at um one of them back on february 1st so let me just start with i'm going to go back to january 30th so a couple weeks worth of blogs here there's not all that many on the 30th, I did an article about something called the Bay Dole Act, and Bay is spelled B-A-Y-H dash Dole, D-O-L-E Act. I believe this was 1981. Um, and I pointed this out because it's just one more reason why you shouldn't trust the uh, National, Health, National Institutes of Health just solely, um, and that's because of this act. And I'm just gonna read to you the first paragraph from my blog which you can find, I gave you the website earlier, I'll link it down below. Um, the intricate tapestry of scientific and technological progress, the, the Bay Dole Act stands as a controversial place of legislation that has significantly and negatively shaped the landscape of innovation with the NIH. It was enacted in 1980. This law was intended to spur the commercialization of federally funded research by granting research, researchers the ability to patent and profit from their findings. So it is literally legal for drug companies to pay the researchers at National Institute of Health for their work in quote unquote science. This is conflict of interest at its finest, my opinion. 
Um, I get that it takes money to run these studies, but when the money comes from the people selling the drugs, I really, really wonder. So not to go political on you again, uh, but I think RFK's got something here when he says, we can make this all go away tomorrow by immediately making it illegal for drug companies to advertise on TV. Uh, but this goes back from two years after I was born. It's been going on forever. People just need to be open to it. So go read that blog, read about that particular act, and share with me your thoughts. Now, on the nine, it's on January 31st. I actually did an article about nine ways to eat out healthier. I'm not gonna go into the details. I will tell you to go to the website and download the PDF because there's literally a PDF that you can have that you can take um, that will just give you some ideas when you go out to eat, um, how you can go out to eat and be a little bit healthier when you do it by not making such bad choices, being informed about what you're actually eating, which is what we're about to do here in about 15 minutes. We have a family party at a restaurant, so we're gonna follow some of these guidelines when we go. Um, on, the, on February 1st, I did an article about why is sugar so addictive? Um, and the answer to that is on, it's addictive on purpose. When we refine sugar, uh, it kicks off the dopamine pathways inside of your brain that are the same pathways that are fired when you consume cocaine or other illicit drugs. Um, sugar is easy to get. It's purposely put into foods to, to addict you to them so that you keep going back and buying them. Uh, so the reason why it's so addictive is because people can pro the food companies can profit from it when you eat it and when you get addicted to it. So three more topics will be done. Try not to sneeze on you here. All right. On the seventh, I wrote an article about peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy, if you don't know, is a condition, it's a symptom, let me say that correctly, it is a symptom of your peripheral nerves breaking down and it basically when you start to lose the nerve sensation from your extremities, it's known as peripheral neuropathy. The peripheral, peripheral nerve refers to any nerve outside the central nervous system and neuropathy is, if you break that word down, it means problem in the nerve. So. What it most commonly shows up as um, tingle, numbness, tingling in hands and feet uh, or face or anywhere else in peripheral neuropathy, but most common is gonna come from hands and feet. It's most common in diabetics. And in my particular case, I had it because of chemotherapy. Uh, the chemotherapy treatment that I had back in 2009, I don't know if you're aware of that or not. I had testicular cancer back then and I was going through chemo and it just so happens that chemotherapy destroys very active cells, which um, the peripheral nerves in your hands and feet go to a part of your spinal cord that are very, very metabolically active. And so it actually kills off those particular cells. And for me, I developed that wadded up, I felt like I was wearing a wadded up sock, like the, like the sock had literally rolled over and that little seam that's usually across your toes was actually underneath the ball of my feet and it drove me crazy. I experienced numbness, tingling, and pain at night. And at 30 years old, I went to, to my oncologist to talk to him about it and he literally told me it was hell to get old. Um, so since then I kind of launched into neuropathy of like how can we get this going. So in this particular article we go into why the medic why Medicare and insurance companies get it wrong, why they tell you there's nothing they can do, here's just throw some anti-seizure medication at it which is um, which is gabapentin and some other things you need to look at if you have neuropathy. So if, I took this from a kind of a personal angle uh, just because I'm a nerd and I start to look at other people's ads on social media uh, and there's just so much stuff out there that you could spend a lot of money on neuropathy and some of it's going to help you, some of it's going to be a, a waste of money. So what I did for this particular article was I went out and I found three things, or it might be four, let me check. I went out and found a few items. All of them were underneath $100. There's four things, five things on here. Um, they were all under $100 and how they can actually make a pretty significant difference in neuropathy. I explained why they make a difference. Uh, but when it comes to dealing with neuropathy, and there's also links to these too, so you can go find them like on Amazon or whatever. They're all under $100, super th easy things to do from you know, changing to a whole food diet, which I gave you a menu for that, uh, to red light therapy, vibration therapy. There's a supplement on here that I really like. And then there's some programmable TENS units that can actually fire the back part of the spinal cord appropriately to, to fire up those nerves. So all of that is in that particular post. And then I talked about um, 
PRP or platelet-rich plasma. This is another personal story for me because my shoulder's been giving me a lot of issues lately. Uh, and y'all know that I like to lift, I like to go to the gym, and I'm finally starting to get my strength back. And so doing PRP into my shoulder, it's basically we took my own blood, we spun it down, took the plasma that was left on top, we injected that into the joint itself. And um, basically what that does is it congregates all those growth factors and cytokines and things that come from your own plasma, your own healing factors, puts them back into the joint in a concentrated level. And I have gotten my strength is, like I said, it's on its way back. My range of motion is doing awesome. Uh, pain's a little bit twingy. And PRP, the downside of it is, is every now and then you're going to have to do it more than once. And I do feel like I'm going to have to do it a second time. Um, Kim, for Kim's sake, I mean, she was out there doing pull-ups this morning. Uh, so her shoulder's done really, really well with this. But I think I'm going to do it a, a second time for myself. So, you know, we're bumping up against time here. I like to keep these as short as possible. I'm going to share some more stuff with you later. Uh, what I'd really like to get into is we are working on a men's health program and we're calling it the nuts and bolts of men's health, which I very much did that on purpose. Uh, I want to get into those details later and I also want to talk about traumatic brain injury uh, just because I've got a really cool case that I'm working on right now. So uh, I'm going to save those for next time. We're going to wrap this up so we can keep this at a decent time. Uh, just keep things just short for you. So I appreciate you guys. I love that you listen to this and we look forward to sharing more and more information about it this, uh, and just helping you however we can. So if you have a topic that you'd like me to cover, I'd be happy to do that for you as long as it's appropriate. Uh, but just shoot me a, ma a message, an email. You can actually text 208-218-8622 um, or you just shoot me an email. I'll leave all the information in the, in the description. So thanks again for sitting with me for a few minutes. Hope you got a lot out of this and we'll see you next time.